Anna's speech is going to be, can you please help me? I forget the exact. Polo, the mystery explained. That's it, which I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, and it's about organizing your speech. We'll be looking for a nice organized patterns and uh, engaging topic in around five to seven minutes. Correct. Okay. So I didn't prepare anything beyond that. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone. Hello. As Brian mentioned, this is my organizational speech, and so we're going to try to take the tempest that is polo, and I'm going to say not water polo, horse polo, and we're going to explain that tempest and introduce everyone to this amazing and wonderful sport. Very few people in their lifetime actually get the chance to view a polo match in person or even on TV. Uh, I was one of those lucky few, however, that actually was able to play collegiate polo for four years. But going into the sport, I had to learn it from the ground up, just like anyone else. So I'm going to organize this speech, and I'm going to explain the sport of polo in five to seven minutes. The first thing that many people may not know about polo is there are actually two different types of polo. There is outdoor polo, which everyone is most familiar with. The King of England, Pretty Woman are some examples of seeing outdoor polo. However, there is also arena polo, or called indoor polo as well. So let's explain the differences. An outdoor polo field is 300 yards by 160 yards. That's the equivalent of slightly over nine football fields, and it's actually the largest field of play in organized sport. Horses will actually go up to 30 miles per hour playing outdoor polo. An outdoor polo match is four on four. So four riders on a team compete against four riders on another team. An outdoor polo match is six chuckers long, and that's our first new word. A chucker is the polo term for the equivalent of a period in hockey. So there are six chuckers in an outdoor polo match, each seven and a half minutes long. The goalposts in an outdoor field are 24 feet apart, and scoring a goal in outdoor polo is just by hitting the ball through those goalposts. Just like in a field goal in football, height does not matter. As long as it's through the goalpost, that ball can be 40, 60 feet in the air when it goes between the goalposts. And an out-of-bounds is just like soccer. There is an out-of-bounds line on the field. If the ball goes out of play, brought back in, play is started again. So that's the field for outdoor polo. Field for arena polo, or indoor polo is, polo, is significantly different. First of all, the arena for an indoor polo match is 300 feet by 150 feet. So you're talking a much smaller field of play. An arena polo match has solid walls, just like hockey. So you actually have boarding in indoor, in indoor polo. Because of this limited field of play, indoor polo is three on three. So the four on four for outdoor, three on three for indoor. And indoor polo matches tend to be only four chuckers long. So four periods of the same seven and a half minutes each. Goal posts are significantly different as well. Goal posts in an indoor match to accommodate for the smaller field of play are 10 feet wide by 15 feet tall. There is a height limit in indoor polo. So you have to be able to get that ball to score a goal through the 10 foot wide space, but also underneath 15 feet. Part of that is because indoor polo is often played in a variety of different environments and it's very hard to necessarily gauge height, and if you hit the ball too high in the air, you're kind of likely to knock out a window, which usually facilities frown upon. <laughs> now, out of bounds in arena polo is very similar to hockey. Hockey, you know, you can hit the puck out of play in the air. Polo would be similar. That ball is in play at all times unless it is hit out of the field of play above the balls of the, of the arena. So that's what we have to work with in outdoor and indoor polo. Obviously, who plays on the field? You have a tempest of riders and you have a tempest of horses moving around all at the same time. And each one of those riders and horses has to wear a lot of different equipment. From the rider side, all riders are required to wear a helmet. All riders are also required to wear some type of face protection or at the very least eye protection. So you can actually have a face guard similar to a face guard in football, but a majority 
of polo players instead will actually just wear protective safety glasses, similar to what consumers' employees might wear when they're out in the field, something that's impact resistant if they're hit in the face by a ball, which unfortunately does happen. <laughs> Riders also wear leather knee pads. Polo is a contact sport. Many people don't realize this, especially arena polo. Polo ponies actually are trained to check, like in hockey, check shoulder to shoulder. And when the horses check shoulder to shoulder, riders are going to check knee to knee. And I can tell you from personal experience, if you are not wearing knee pads, it hurts a lot. <laughs> uh, so for similar reasons, riders also wear tall leather boots. They also obviously have equipment to hit the ball. And that is a mallet of 49 to 54 inches in length. Um, the length is dependent on actually the size of horse you're riding. The ball itself is going back to our differences in terms of outdoor versus arena polo. Outdoor polo, the ball is three and a half inches of solid white plastic. So it's very heavy, very dense. An indoor polo ball is actually 12 and a half to 15 inches and is similar in appearance and shape and consistency to a soccer ball. So really the other part of polo, an extremely important part, is the horse itself often referred to as a polo pony, even though a polo pony is technically not a polo, it's, I'm sorry, is technically not a pony, and actually can be any breeder type of horse. All the equipment for the horses is extremely dependent on safety. All polo ponies are required to wear leg wraps on all four feet to help protect their legs from impacts from other horses or mallets. Polo ponies also wear a saddle, a saddle pad, and a breast collar across their chest to help hold that saddle in place. Polo ponies are equipped with a bridle, often with a double set of reins for extra control for the rider. And an interesting thing about polo ponies is they actually shave off their manes so that they have more control over those reins and, don't, and won't get caught up in the mane for a safety reason that may cause that polo pony to go off course. Tails are also braided for the same reason. They want loose tail hair of a horse flying around mallet gets caught in it, that mallet could potentially be ripped out of somebody's hand. So, how do you win? You score more goals than the other team. That's pretty much the only simple part of polo. I hope I've at least given you a quick introduction to the different parts of polo. I hope you have a little bit more sense, or a sense out of this tempestuous sport. And if you would like to come test your newfound knowledge, Michigan State will be playing in a polo match at MSU on January 10th of this year. I'm sorry, January 10th of 2014. Thank you.